Hey everybody, JCB here at The Awesomest, and you're watching The Awesomest Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the PR35 microphone by Heil Sound. Now, as always, I am not now, nor have I ever been an employee of Heil Sound. This is just my own opinion, and I have not been compensated in any way. For those of you who may not have heard of Heil Sound, founder and CEO Bob Heil was the first to invent and pioneer many of the technologies and audio systems that have become a staple of the industry. The company has had very close business and personal relationships with virtually every major rock and roll act of the past century, and they're still creating new technologies today. There's a fantastic video from the Heil Sound's introduction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that contains a much deeper history of the company, so be sure to check out that link in the description below. By the way, HeilSound.com will be the place you want to go if you like what you see and hear from this microphone. But if you like what you see and hear from me, ladies, sorry, I'm married. But you can like, comment, and subscribe. So the first step is to open the box. Let's take a look at the packaging. Let's see here, we have the Heil Sound logo, PR35 from the Pro Series, state-of-the-art, large diameter, dynamic microphone. I can show you something else large in diameter. This coffee cup, am I right? Holy cow. So it's mostly the same information on all six sides with a few bits of additional information here and there. Here is the thickness of the cardboard of the box, since apparently some people do care about that. I assume it's mostly homeless people and children who care, as they tend to make houses out of cardboard. But not me, I live in a real house made out of debt. Here's the manual with the waveform. I like how basic the manual is. There's not a bunch of filler crap, just the stuff you need to know. The back shows some accessories that are not included, but definitely recommended. Also in the box is a Heil Sound sticker, which I will definitely be putting on my guitar case. Right there, you didn't believe me, did you? This is a microphone's carrying case wrapped in plastic for sealed in freshness. The bag is what appears to be leather, but probably isn't. Either way, it feels very nice. It has the logo on both the front and the dog tag. It feels very nice in your hand and has a nice easy zipper. This is a very firm and solid fitting case with a nice little zipper area here for notes and other things. Here is the mic clip. It feels pretty heavy duty. Very well made. The detailed machining on this is very nice. It's a higher quality than the standard Shure mic clip. These are different colored rings that you can put on your microphone if you're using multiple mics, so you can color code whose is whose, that way you don't end up accidentally touching your lips to someone else's slobber, unless you're into that kind of thing. Then we have the standard windscreen, great for producing outdoor noise on stage. The mic is very snugly tucked in, but this is a plus as I'd rather have it hard to remove than having it fall out every time I open the bag. I noticed the mic has a purple band on it by default, which is nice because my band's color has been purple for many years. The mic feels very nice in my hand. It's heavy, but not too heavy. It feels sturdy and premium. It has a flat grill with vents on the side, and it's not slippery. Down here by the screw, we have the bass roll-off switch. And inside the connection area is a little Heil logo, which is a nice touch. The windscreen slides on pretty easily, but I was a bit worried that I would tear it, though that turned out not to be an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and test this microphone the same way I test any microphone I was considering for use in one of my band's projects, and that's by auditioning it against other similar microphones. First up is the SM58 by Shure. This microphone is an industry standard for stage performances, and some people do use it in the studio. It runs about $100 brand new and is a workhorse of a microphone. Also by Shure, we have the Beta 57. This is an upgraded version of the classic SM57. I'm using the Beta 57 over the Beta 58 for the vocal test because the only real difference between the two is the flatter grill on the Beta 57, which allows for closer placement to an audio source and all the proximity effect issues that come along with it. Since the PR35 has a similar flat grill, this should make for a slightly fairer comparison than the Beta 58 while testing vocals. So these are all very similar microphones, all of which are designed to be used both on stage and in the studio to varying effect. For this microphone shootout, I will be singing lyrics from one of my band's songs called Heartbroken, as it's going to give me the best idea of how well the mics work with my voice and style of music. Also, I don't want to sing a cover song and have this video flagged by Content ID. Now before I begin, I want to point out that I'm recording all three microphones raw. That means no EQ, no no compression, no effects of any kind to alter the sound of the microphones. What you hear is what you get, with the one exception of volume. Since the human ear has a tendency to mistake louder for better, I'm going to go ahead and try to match all the volumes as best I can so there's not one microphone that's severely louder than the others. But that's the only manipulation I'm going to do, otherwise you're going to hear exactly what these microphones sound like for better or worse. All of the mics will be using the exact same XLR cable, as well as the same XLR to USB interface. They will all be recorded in the same space at the same time of day on the same day 
using identical quality settings and rendered to WAV files. I will do my best to keep a consistent distance from the mic as well as sing as consistently as possible. Now I chose this section of this song specifically because it not only abruptly changes volume but also has quite a few plosives and I want to hear how each mic handles them. And no, that's not an abbreviation of explosives. Plosives are the sound of air hitting the microphone and is commonly caused by words that begin with the letters P and B. Popping Peter Piper's pimples would be a good example of a plosive heavy sentence. This might be the weirdest review ever. But since any microphone might have plosive issues if unprotected, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy a standard pop screen to help reduce this effect. So first up is the SM58. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed, memories on repeat, playing in her ad like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. As she reaches the ending one more time. Next up we have the Beta 57. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed. Memories on repeat playing in her ad like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. As she reaches the ending one more time. And lastly, the PR35. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed. Memories on repeat playing in her ad like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. As she reaches the ending one more time. Now I'm going to play them all back to back one more time so you can hear the differences. There's a girl breaking down, lying in her bed. Memories on repeat playing in her ad like a record in her mind. Locked herself in her room in her empty home. Silence breaks with her tears cause she's all alone. As she reaches the ending one more time. My first reaction is that the SM58 sounds like absolute garbage, which is to be expected. I mean, this thing was designed about 50 years ago and a lot has changed about the way we design and mass produce microphones since then. While the mic handled the increased volume fairly well and didn't seem to mind the plosives, to me the low end and mid range sound really muddy and bland. For this microphone's 50th anniversary next year, they should seriously consider dropping the price of the SM58 to $58. The Beta 57 brought its A game, showing none of that muddiness that the old SM58 had, though I think it overcompensated a little bit in the highs as they were kind of harsh. The volume change also seemed to take the microphone by surprise, though it never really distorted. The plosives were kept under control the entire time, which was a pleasant surprise and shows what a good pop screen can do. This is a great microphone for the price, which currently runs about $140 new on sale. But I think the winner of round one was the PR35. Sure, with the bass roll-off switch disengaged, my voice was a little bassier than normal, but it was nowhere near as muddy as that old BDSM58. Plus, with the roll-off switch on, I really liked the way my voice sounded, and the microphone handled the volume change very smoothly. Plus, all the plosives were kept under control. Regardless of the switch, the mid stayed solid, the highs under control, and the low end was deep and rich. I feel like this microphone is more versatile than the other two simply because it has that roll-off switch and will better accommodate a wider range of voices. But at $274 brand new, expect to pay for that versatility. Surprisingly, all three microphones did pretty well, except this dinosaur. Now I'm going to test a few claims made by Hal Sound about their microphone. The first claim is that the PR35 has a rubber shock mount inside to minimize handling noise. So let's test handling noise on all three handheld mics. So I have to say, I think the PR35 was the winner of round two as well. No matter how much I handled the microphone, it didn't really have very much noise when compared to the other two. Now, another claim made by the manual is that no matter how much you cup the microphone, you won't get that distorted garbled mess with the PR35. So let's test all three microphones with an improper mic handling technique. This is a proper way to hold a microphone. Now let's look at some improper ways to hold a microphone. I am singing into my microphone.
I am singing into my microphone. I am singing into my microphone. But cupping the microphone like this is by far the worst way to handle your mic. It creates this weird, muddy, distorted sound that can't be fixed no matter how much you try in the mix. So let's see how all three microphones stack up to Microphone Mishandling 101. Check one, check two. 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 Again, I think the PR35 came out on top. The other two microphones suffered greatly during the improper handling technique of cupping your microphone. I mean, it sounded horrible. It sounded like a garbled mess like we would expect. But the PR35 sounded pretty natural even when I cupped it completely around, which is really hard to do and you'd have to be a total complete idiot to do that on stage. Lastly, Heil Sound claims that the PR35 isolates its sound source with a minus 35 dB off axis volume. That is to say, reflections bouncing back toward the microphone from the back of your vocal booth should be practically non-existent. So let's once again test all three microphones, this time by speaking into them properly, and then turning the microphone around and speaking into it from behind. Check one, check two. 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 Once again, the PR35 did pretty well, but I was surprised by how isolated the SM58 was. I mean, compared to his newer cousin, the Beta 57, you could barely hear anything when I spoke into the back of that microphone. But overall, the winner of this shootout is definitely the PR35. But I feel like I put it through as much testing as I possibly could, and that it really held its own against the much more popular microphones that I tested it against. I will definitely be using this microphone in some way or another on my band's upcoming album. None of these mics were particularly expensive, but if you want the most bang for your buck, Get the PR35, you won't regret it. If you're wondering how well the PR35 would work for speech and like a podcast or a YouTube video, well go back and watch this video one more time as I recorded every single line of dialogue using the PR35. Check one, check two. This is it right here, using it right now. I think it sounds pretty good. But what do you think of the PR35? How do you think it held up against the other microphones that we tested in this video? Make sure you let me know down below. If you like this kind of content, I'll be doing more reviews in the very near future, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can be kept in the loop. And until next time, keep being awesome.